purpose of this video is to do a review on a Burko Vantage 66 snowblower with a Honda GX690 engine attached to a Polaris Ranger XP1000. And uh, what I'll do is do a quick walk around the machine first and uh, tell you how it's set up and what I use it for and then talk about some of the pros, the things I like and the cons, some of the things that uh, need some work from Burko and some of the things I'll be fixing in the next little while. So the, uh, it's a Burko 66 and the purpose I went with the 66 as opposed to a 72 is because I live in a substantial snow belt. I'm in the interior of BC, south of Revelstoke, British Columbia, and uh, we're in an interior rainforest. In the wintertime we get substantial amounts of snow. I don't know, I, I'm relatively low uh, uh, in elevation, so I'm not exactly sure how much snow we had this year, but um, just above us at 1500 meters, uh, we received about 10 meters of snow at that elevation, so we're probably um, maybe half of that, maybe about 5 meters of snow, so a substantial amount of blowing. I think I put about um, 100 hours, not quite 100 hours on it this winter, and my driveway is about 500 meters long, roughly. And uh, this is its second, second winter. Last year I used it, but I uh, didn't use it near as much because we didn't have near as much snow. The snow that we get is wet, heavy um, snow. It all comes down at close to zero Celsius. So it is quite um, heavy. And the blower's done a fantastic job of doing that so far. So this is a blower. As you can see, it's got some wear and tear on it. And I'll walk you through that. It's set up right now without a battery attached to the unit. I used the battery out of the uh, Ranger and I've just done a quick connect coupling on a, a power cord to it. That saves me having a battery on both machines. And uh, the Ranger is set up with chains on the tires. My driveway is fairly steep and um, I use the Ranger for both my plow and for the snowblower. And there's no way I could push the snowblower up the hill without chains. Any uh, snow or a little bit of ice on the driveway and uh, the machine just does not have enough weight to push the snowblower. Uh, the snowblower is fairly heavy so I think it's about 700 pounds so it does two things. It uh, requires a lot of traction of the machine and the other thing is when you lift the winch up to uh, tilt the machine forward it puts quite a bit of pressure on the front end of the, uh, the Ranger and the shocks compress quite a bit. Um, and the shocks are right now, they're tightened up as, as stiff as they'll go. So that's the setup. There's the, the Ranger. I'll just open up the door and show you the, the way that I've got the controls set up. So the, the controls are set up so the, uh, the joystick and whatnot is just attached to the center of the console. And I have the winch controller. I don't know if you can see it. The winch controller is attached just with tie wraps to the um, the gear shift lever, and that's quite handy actually. Uh, it works out quite well. I didn't invest in in replacing the gear shift knob with the uh, the controller on it, and it's been quite fine. So that's the setup of that. Um, A couple of things I could probably say so far about what I do like is it's worked very well. It, it has plenty of power to blow even heavy and wet snow. The only difficulty it has with power is when um, the snow gets almost like slush, when it's slurpy consistency. Uh, it probably has enough power to blow it. It just is the snow is so dense that um, uh, it creates some issues with plugging the machine up. Other than that, it's, it's worked extremely well. A little bit more of a walk around on the machine. You can see from the front, uh, it has a pretty beefy gearbox uh, for both of the uh, stages of the snowblower. 
Uh, I can only compare that mostly to, I have a neighbor that runs a Kubota machine with a Kubota, a Kubota blower, and his gearbox and drive shafts are not quite as heavy as this one. Um, th that machine definitely has some advantages over this one, but as far as kind of the drive line, um, I believe this one is beefier. This also has a belt drive, which um, could also be considered advantageous because when you do get in that heavy, wet snow, uh, it, you, the worst thing you can do is burn out a belt, where on those other machines it's, it's direct drive and um, there is some issues there and it does uh, cause some issues with plugging that machine up and then it's just kind of locked in place. It's a little bit different. If you start jamming this thing up, you'll hear the uh, belt start to squeal and you can shut it off really quickly and save yourself that agony. Um, my driveway is uh, definitely rocky. It's a gravel driveway and there are a few big stones so I have sucked in quite a few rocks into the machine and there's three shear pins, uh, one on each side of the auger and then the, um, uh, and I can show those. So there's, uh, you can see there's a shear pin there on this side. There's a shear pin there as well. And there's the shear pin right here. And I've only broken that one once, I believe, and I forget why. I must have got a rock jammed in there. But I do regularly break the other ones, and I now buy them in packs of 50. I certainly haven't gone through 50, but I've gone through quite a few. And I just have to be very careful. Uh, it's early in the year, I raised the skid shoes right up. So there's... Uh, a view of the skid shoes. I raise those up and it's right now the shoes are in their highest position because I'm about to put it away for the season um, and you can see by the wear around that uh, uh, the bolt there that I've used it in various positions depending on how much snow is on the driveway but usually at the beginning of the year I have it right up until I create enough base so it's almost like a, a solid pack snow and once that happens, I, I lower the skid shoes down quite a bit, and then it, uh, I don't have any problems with rocks after that point. The uh, controls for the, uh, the chute are pretty easy. They're both electric motors. There's one for the chute to go um, up and down and then rotate around. And uh, I've had consistent problems with this uh, motor and it's the one that rotates. This is the this one here is the one that changes the the shoot angle and this is the one that rotates it from left to right. And uh, I've taken it apart probably 10 times to make sure it's cleaned out and lubricated properly and I think it ices up and um, you have to bust that ice away and um, uh, I, that's probably the primary issue, but it is a problem if the machine sits out for any length of time when it's below zero. You have to spend about five minutes horsing around with that to get it uh, um, moving again. The motor has worked very well. I think I've changed the oil in it now either two or three times, maybe three times. And uh, it's easy to do. You can see the filter is right there. There's a, a drain plug right there and there's one on both sides of the machine actually drain plug so it's oil is super easy to change it takes like maybe 15 minutes uh, to do um, what else can I tell you the fuel uh, can on this thing is is uh, a really good design it's easy to fill up it's easy to see what's going on um, I haven't had any fuel issues whatsoever uh, fuel filters in a good spot, so it's easy to manage as well. Here's your a steel cable on your winch. You're going to go through lots of it. Um, I think I've cut off, I don't know, maybe probably 10, 15 feet off of this steel cable this winter alone between it and my plow. It does wear it out considerably and it wraps in the same place over and over. So, you know, the plan is to just save the steel cable <clears throat> for the winter when I'm using uh, the blower. And then in the summertime, I'll put on a synthetic cable and winter I'll replace it back to the way it is. There's a couple of issues that I would say are problematic with this machine. Um, these chains that you see underneath that hold the 
uh, the blower centered on the, the chassis of the Ranger. They originally come with, with uh, that fitting but a hook on the end and it constantly breaks. Uh, so what I've done is I've replaced those. I've put some shackles, I don't know if you can tell, but I put some shackles on the attachment that goes onto the, uh, the hub and uh, tighten them right up. And the only thing that happens right now is sometimes the back eyelet bends a little bit and I have to take those off and uh, tighten them up in a vise or a pair of vice grips or something. Other than that, that works much better. So if you had a machine and that was a problem, I would change those out right away and you'll still have to do some maintenance on it. That is, uh, that is, was an ongoing problem and, it's, and it took me a while to kind of figure out what the best solution was and it's much better now. I was quite worried about the wheels and the, this arm that goes to the wheels when I first bought it, thinking that they would get bent and the welds would crack uh, because there's a lot of pressure on them and it goes over a lot of uneven terrain. And for a while I was actually driving it down the highway to my neighbor's house, which is about a, a kilometer and a half or two kilometers away down the highway. And I was probably driving about 20 or 25 kilometers an hour down the road. And, um, uh, I didn't really have any problems. If you get going too fast, the wheels really start to wobble, so you have to control your speed to no, no faster than that. But I haven't had any issues. The welds are still good. They haven't bent at all. Um, so I've been pretty surprised and pretty happy with that part of it, because I thought that was going to be a weak point. The other significant weak point, which you'll see here, is on the frame. Uh, this machine has an extension on it, and you'll see that where the hitch attaches to the machine. This is a major, major weak spot and it's, it's broken and bent right now and I've had that straightened and re-welded probably about two or three times already and uh, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a really good neighbor that um, is also a welder um, by trade so he'll rebuild it over the sometimes the summer. We'll get it all beefed up. I'm, I'm a little bit worried that it was designed the way it is so that it would break like it has rather than um, bend something else uh, more significant. So we'll see. But he'll, uh, he'll beef that up considerably and it'll be much better. So that definitely is a weak spot. And uh, it's, that has also been an ongoing issue of having to straighten it and re-weld it. So we'll call that the end of the video. Um, I'm putting the machine away for the winter. I've already done that once, uh, thinking that we had hit spring and uh, everything was quite uh, melted and the road was dry. And then uh, we got another about 30 centimeters of snow. So I had to pull the blower back out and uh, blow that away. So I'm going to put it away. Hopefully we're good for the year now. It's been quite nice down in the valley. Um, have it put away for the winter and if nothing else I'll hook up the plow we should be good. If you have any questions or anything feel free to, to ask and I'll try to answer everything I can or if you need some more video on a certain part of the machine I'd be more than happy to do that. And um, it's just you know, and there's my fuddy, fuzzy buddy Jasper coming to you from beautiful Upper Arrow Lake in the interior of British Columbia. And we'll call that a wrap.